My name is Max Strauss with ProInterviews.org, Facebook.com slash ProInterviews, and Twitter.com slash ProInterviews. I'd like to welcome you to the interview with Warren Moon. Moon attended West LA College and then transferred to the University of Washington. He ended his collegiate career as the Rose Bowl MVP. He entered the 1978 NFL Draft, but was undrafted, and decided to play football in the CFL for the Edmonton Eskimos. He threw for approximately 22,000 yards in his six years there, and won five straight Grey Cup championships. He then entered the NFL and signed with the Houston Oilers. He also played for the Vikings, Seahawks, and the Chiefs during his career. He was nominated to nine Pro Bowls and had three All-Pro years. He was the Pro Bowl MVP in 1998. He retired passing for over 49,000 yards and about 291 touchdowns. His jersey number, number one, is retired for the Tennessee Titans as he is their all-time franchise leader in passing yards. He was inducted into both the Canadian Football Hall of Fame and Pro Football Hall of Fame. Here's the interview with Warren Moon, and I hope you enjoy the collages also. How do you connect with your fans? I do it in a variety of ways. I, uh, I have a Twitter account. Uh, it's at uh, WMoon1. And um, I, I, I keep up with them that way. I also keep up with them uh, through Facebook. And I, uh, I have fan mail. I answer fan mail. Um, people write me all the time and either want something uh, signed or, or want, want uh, some type of um, you know, response, depending on what they're asking for. Um, that's another way. And then I go out and I do uh, speaking engagements as well. So uh, I have a lot of different ways that I reach out to my fans. And uh, even though I'm not an active player anymore, there's still a lot of people that follow me and there's still a lot of people that were fans of my game when I played. So uh, it's important to keep up with the fans. What was your high school football experience like? It was pretty good. Um, you know, it started out kind of slow because I had a, a uh, sophomore team coach that really didn't want to play quarterback didn't kind of allow me to play the position. I, I actually played it, but I was a third string quarterback, believe it or not. And um, I don't know what it was uh, about this coach and me, but for some reason he just didn't like, believe in my abilities. And uh, I think he knew that I was talented because he felt like uh, when we were say, way behind in the game or whatever, he wanted to put me in and just throw the ball and try to get back in the game. But just didn't feel like uh, I guess I was worthy of starting, so uh, I wasn't a starter on the team. But um, going into my junior year, uh, the varsity coach came up to me one day when I was working out and just told me he was, he was going to make me the starting varsity quarterback. So from then on, it was it was very good because he had a lot of confidence in me. He saw the abilities, saw my leadership qualities, and saw how uh, how hard I was a worker. So he made me the starting varsity quarterback and. Uh, we went on and won our league championship. I was player of the year in the conference, and uh, I was an all-city quarterback. So it, it was a great experience for me, as it turned out, for high school. What was your, your experience like at uh, University of Washington? It was a sweet experience. When I first got there, I beat out a, a uh, fifth-year uh, senior who was a guy from Seattle, very popular, and uh, when I came into the the program. It was a new program. Don James had just taken over, so I was one of his first recruiting classes. And uh, during two day practices, I, I beat this guy out and became the starting quarterback. But we had one of the toughest uh, schedules in the country that year, and we didn't have a very talented team. We were a 2-9 and nine team the year before I got there, so not a very talented team. We got off to a very slow start. And because of that, you know, I took a lot of criticism, you know, a lot of pulling from the crowd, a lot of negative media. Uh, in that, so uh, I just knew it was a matter of time before we recruited in the right talent that we would turn the thing around, and we eventually did. And uh, by my senior year, we were uh, you know, Pac-8 Pac champions. I was Pac-8 player of the year, and uh, we won the Rose Bowl. I was Rose Bowl most valuable player. So uh, it started out slow, started out tough, but it ended up sweet. And uh, that, that, those are the most. Uh, uh, I guess the most refreshing memories I have of college is the way it ended, even though I always knew how it started, and that, that I think made it worth more because I knew I really had to go through some tough times in order to 
get to that success that I was looking for. Looking back on being undrafted in the 1978 NFL Draft, how do you think that moment helped you shape your career? In the pre-draft system that was going on, and when, you, when you're being scouted and all that, that's when you kind of get a sense of where you might go in the draft and who might draft you and all those different things. Well, my agent, uh, from all the, all the information that he was getting, was that I probably wasn't going to be drafted as a quarterback. I was drafted as a quarterback, would probably be way down the line. So that's when I decided to go to Canada because, felt like, I wanted to still play the quarterback position. I felt like I was good enough to play it, and I, I wasn't going to get a chance to play in the NFL. I'd play it wherever somebody would let me. So they were going to let me do it up in the, in the Canadian Football League. So I signed up there prior to the draft. And um, when draft day came around, I was hoping I didn't get drafted so nobody would have my rights. I ever came back to the NFL to play, I could go wherever I want to play. I'd be a free agent. Uh, so where most guys were looking for on draft day to get drafted, I was looking on draft day not to get drafted, only because I had already signed in Canada and uh, knew I was going to play up there and didn't want to uh, have, have one team down here have my rights. Do you think they're, like, what do you think about the relationship to the draft today and the players? Well, you know, the draft has is, is, um, it's become a huge and, uh, there's a lot that goes into it, much more now than when I came out, uh, you know, back, way back in 1978. Um, many more scouting organizations. Um, every team has their own, you know, scouting, scouting uh, staff now, where back then they had different scouting services that you went by. And um, there's many more draft analysis people out there, uh, analyzers like Mel, the Mel Kuypers and the Todd McShays and people like that that are all giving their, you know, expert opinions. The draft is now put on television on, on two different networks. The uh, NFL Combine is, is covered by two different networks. So it's, it's a huge, huge process, uh, much more so than it was when I came out. And uh, these players are picked and probed and analyzed more than, uh, more than they probably should be, but it makes for good television and makes the sport more interesting, I guess. So then you started your career in the CFL. Uh, you were a five straight Grey Cup champion. Which one uh, do you take most pride in? I think probably the third one because uh, I, I kind of shared the quarterback with a guy by the name of Tom Wilkinson. He was a really good quarterback up there. <clears throat> and we, uh, we had a two quarterback system and, and uh, it was very successful. When Tom retired, now all of a sudden it was my, it was my show to continue and uh, I just knew there was a lot of pressure on me to keep that streak going. And uh, if it was going to happen, it was going to be you know, because of my play. So I, I think when we won that third one, uh, I think that was the most special because I was able to do it basically as me being the leader of the football team by myself. Was there any thought about, you know, staying in the CFL? or like What changed your mind and, just, and said, look, I'm, I think I'm good enough to go to the NFL? Well, you know, it was always, excuse me, a dream of mine to play in the NFL as a young kid, and and uh, that was something that I I still felt like I was good enough to do. Just the circumstances weren't there for me when I came out of college. But after I accomplished so much in Canada, you know, we won five straight championships. I was MVP of the league. You know, I was a couple of time MVP of the championship game. So there wasn't a whole lot left for me to do individually or team wise in Canada. I had pretty much done it all. So. I, I still felt like I wanted to measure myself and see how good I was as a quarterback. And the only way you can do that is playing against the best players. And the best players were obviously in the National Football League. So that's what kind of made me want to come back. My curiosity of how good I could be and plus that dream of always wanting to play in the National Football League. Can you take me through your journey in the NFL? Like how you started and a memory from each team? I started in Houston. Um, I chose Houston basically because it kind of reminded me of a situation where they were a 2-14 and 14 team but even before we got there. We had a new coach coming in, which was my Canadian football league coach that I had won five championships with. So uh, I felt like it was, a, it was a, uh, a good experience that I could help build something uh, from, from, the, from the bottom and possibly make it into a, you know, a perennial winning football team. And uh, that really 
the field to me, especially after coming from a team where I had so much success in Canada. I wanted to go somewhere where I could help build a team. Uh, so I went to Houston because of that, and uh, it, it was tough in those early days because we didn't have a very good team. But again, we turned things around, and we became a perennial uh, playoff team and won division championships. Never were able to win the big one, the Super Bowl. But uh, I think my biggest memory of, of going to Houston was after that third year when we finally won, went to the playoffs and won our first playoff game, which happened to be against. Uh, the other team that I was deciding to go between Houston and Seattle, that was the team we beat our first playoff game. So that was probably my most memorable moment, that first playoff win after going through some pretty tough, tough times those first few years. And from there, I got traded to the, uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, at that time, the salary cap came into play, and we had a young quarterback that we had been developing. And uh, because of my salary and his salary, that they weren't going to be able to keep two big quarterback salaries. And, and I was 30, I think 38 years old at that time. They just didn't know how much longer I would continue to play at that level. So they traded me and kept the other guy. So I went to the Minnesota Vikings, and uh, it was a great organization. I played for Jenny Green, probably one of the best coaches I ever played for. And uh, I, I really enjoyed playing there. I, I played with Chris Carter, who was probably the most gifted receiver I ever played with, most competitive. And I had three years there. We went to playoffs a couple of times. But again, our team just probably wasn't good enough to be a championship football team. But we were always exciting. We were always up there in tops in the offense. In offense. And uh, it's a great experience there. And I think my most memorable was being able to uh, – Devoted to another Pro Bowl from another uh, in another organization in a, with another team. Um, I've been in Houston all those years, ten years, and, and I go to another organization. I'm able to go to two more Pro Bowls with them. So, uh, especially at the age of 38, 39 years old. And from there, um, I went to the uh, Seattle Seahawks. I was there because, again, I was 40 years old, maybe 41. So I think I was 40 years old. And Brad Johnson, who was my backup, it felt like it was they were going to lose him to free agency if they didn't re-sign him. So uh, they decided to go with Brad for the future again. Uh, and they, they gave me the opportunity of either staying there or going somewhere else, and I decided to be a free agent. And I went to Seattle, and, and I went there mainly because I felt like I had a chance to maybe start there. Their starter, John Freeze, was a guy who had, uh, had a lot of injury problems, and I felt like if I went there, I could compete with him and maybe be the starter. Seattle was a place that I always wanted to play, one, because I went to school in Seattle, and two, because I almost went signed with the Seahawks before I went to Houston. So getting a chance to play there was, was something that I wanted to do, and and uh, got a chance to do that, play for Dennis Erickson, who was a really good coach, a guy who had a, a, a good passing offense, and um, led the league in passing that year for, uh, for a guy that was 41 years old. So it was pretty exciting for me. I made another Pro Bowl, the MVP of the Pro Bowl, and, and uh, I think just getting a chance to play in Seattle in front of my, uh, all my college College fans was probably the most memorable part of being back in Seattle. I moved to Kansas City my last two years. I just didn't feel like I was ready to give up football. I, I felt like I still had a you know, couple of years left to play. I looked around to see what teams I could possibly uh, compete with. But at that time, I was 40, 43 years old. And uh, believe it or not, I had four or five teams that still wanted to sign me. But I went to Kansas City mainly because I thought... I, Kansas City had a, a team that I thought could compete uh, for a division title and possibly go far into the playoffs. And uh, it was a chance of maybe me being able to get a chance to play there. Elvis Gerbach was the starting quarterback. But when I went there, Elvis uh, probably had two of his best years. I don't know if that had to do with, uh, with me being there and me pushing him, but he had two of his most productive years of his career. And I got a chance to, to uh, experience the, the Kansas City uh, fan base, which is a great fan base. There's probably one of the greatest places to play professional football. Uh, you got 80,000 people every week, they're all dressed in red, and they really get into their football team. So it was a good experience for me. It was, 
it was a tough experience, though, because being a backup, I had never been one in my whole career. Uh, so that made it tough. But um, um, once I, I played there a couple of years, I felt like maybe it's time for me to leave the game now just because physically I felt I could still do it, but just didn't have that same drive and desire anymore just because I wasn't playing. I didn't feel like I was part of what was going on. And even though my role was to be a backup and to be more of a leader and, and uh, things like that on the team, I still wanted to compete. So uh, I felt like maybe it was just time for me to leave the game. If you could call and choose one play to run again, what play would you choose? Oh, man, one play. Probably when we were in the run and shoot in Houston, we had a we had a play where, we, where there was an all out blitz. I could go to an option on the option because nobody was assigned to the quarterback when you ran the option because we had four wide receivers. Everybody was split out, and uh, you either had to take me or you had to take the pitch man. But one of us was going to be free, depending on who they decided to take. So whenever I saw an all out blitz, especially. Down around the goal line, I would I would audible to that option play, and we either either I scored a touchdown or that running back scored a touchdown. We hardly ever failed on that one. People stopped listening us down there because of that. So probably going to that option play. I took some pretty big hits on that play after I pitched the ball, but still the, the uh, outcome was always pretty good. So probably running the option in the NFL is something you don't see a lot of quarterbacks. We only did it like in certain situations. Looking back on your career, what do you think the th- like three words that would describe like the keys to your success? I'd say perseverance, uh, commitment, and, um, and and work. Well, just because of all the things I had to go through in my career, perseverance part, I I, I was continuing to overcome them. Uh, whatever it was, whatever obstacle was put in front of me. Um, like I said, starting all the way back in high school, them not letting me really get a chance to play quarterback. Having to go to junior college after high school because no major school would put me as a quarterback and before I finally went to the University of Washington after a year of uh, junior college. And then, you know, the tough times that I, I faced up at, uh, at, at the University of Washington once I got there with the, with the, uh, the fans and the booing and, and the negativity and all those things. And the same thing in the NFL. It was, it was very, very... Very, very tough times uh, for an African-American playing quarterback during those days. So, uh, uh, perseverance part of it is something I'm very, very proud of. I think my commitment to stay at that position, uh, people wanted to change my position. People told me that I wasn't going to be a good quarterback, that I couldn't play quarterback at the NFL level. So, I think my commitment to, to believing in myself, believing that I have the ability, is something that, um, that kept me going because like, I could have, we listen to everybody and, and uh, change positions and probably would have never played in the NFL if, if I would have done that because I didn't feel like I was good enough to play another position. And then I think my work ethic is one of the reasons why I was able to play so long and play uh, in a high level for so long is because I I worked as hard as anybody. You know, I was first guys in, last guys out. And, and I think as a quarterback, you've got to be that type of guy to be a leader. You're, you're Teammates have to see that you're putting in the time, and you're putting in the work and the energy. If they see you doing it, they'll follow suit. So, uh, those are three of the most important reasons why I think uh, my career was so successful. After the NFL, you started Sports One Marketing. Will you give me a brief rundown of what your company is all about? Sure. It's a sports marketing and entertainment company that I started about a year and a half ago, and. Uh, I have a lot of uh, relationships in sports because of all the years that I've played. Uh, I also was involved in broadcasting. You know, first, uh, eight or eight years I got involved in broadcasting. So because of all those relationships, because uh, of all the people that I know in sports, because I was marketed myself as a player, I know a lot about uh, the marketing, uh, marketing aspect of the game. So... I started this company based on that, and uh, I felt like it was something that I knew a lot about. It was something that was very exciting. Sports is always changing, whether it's the technology involved and everything else. I like doing charity events and things like that. And 
one aspect of my business is doing events that have a charity aspect to them. I also enjoy sports production, uh, whether it be movies or television, especially uh, inspirational sports movies. So that's something we're involved in as well, uh, looking for funding for, for good sports-related uh, movie projects. So uh, that's, a, that's a little bit of the business in a, in a nutshell, but there's a lot more to it. If you want to go on our website at sportsmanmarketing.com, it really explains what our whole uh, philosophy is, our whole mission statement and everything else. Everyone knows about your mentor role with Cam Newton. If you were to elaborate on, on what your role really is and what you help him with and, and what you really do. Well, I was first uh, asked to help him uh, with his training to get him ready for the NFL Combine and the NFL, uh, NFL Pro Day and, and uh, kind of change his, his fundamentals and change his footwork to be more related to what the NFL, what he's going to do where in college he was more out of the shotgun, he's a spread offense. Now he's going to be in a more conventional offense where he's under the center, he's going to be dropping back. So I was asked to come in there and help him with that part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm also, uh, you know, just helping him in a, in a, you know, in a mentor type role where I can just kind of give him advice on whatever it might be about the transition going to college football into, into pro football. And that, that could be anything. It could be on how to, you know, how to, how to carry yourself, how to answer questions about certain things, how to handle yourself um, on the on the blackboard when it, when teams are talking offense, uh, breaking down defenses, uh, be on you know what type of clothes to wear to certain certain events, just just a a, a wide array of things that, that might you know come about. He knows he has me as a sounding board to ask questions about those things and how to handle certain situations. So. Uh, I'm just a guy that's going to be there for him whenever he needs you know, my guidance. And if I feel like there's a time when I, that he needs my guidance or he needs for me to say something to him, I'm going to do that too. It's not a thing where we need to meet each and every week or talk every day on the telephone. It's just a feel thing that we both uh, know that we're, we're there for each other. So uh, that's kind of where my role is right now. And, and uh, <clears throat> he's, he's getting himself ready to hopefully go to a, you know, a camp anytime soon when his lockout ends. So he's trying to study his playbook now and, and uh, continue to work on the things that we worked on fundamental-wise to get himself even smoother and more comfortable with his new footwork that he's learned. If you could describe yourself as any ice cream flavor, what would you be and why? Uh, I'd probably be Neapolitan. I think because of my versatility, I think one of the reasons... I was so successful in this game for so long and was able to be productive in any offense that I was put in is because of my versatility. And, and I, I didn't have just one flavor. I didn't have just one one uh, one talent. I could do a lot of different things, whether it was throw on the run, whether it was play action pass, whether it was drop back, whether it was run with the football, whether it was running. Anything you ask me to do at the quarterback spot, I could do it. And I think my versatility was reason why and uh, that's what kind of Neapolitan ice cream gives you it gives you a lot of different choices a lot of different places for someone who wants to play in the NFL what's the best advice you can give them I think just work you know the three things I talked to you about um, you got to be able to persevere you got to run into uh, adversity a lot of different ways uh, you never know how it's going to come but it's going to come whether it's it's just one day you just don't feel like working out, whether it's in your middle of your workout, you feel like quitting, whether it's um, you know, a coach telling you that you're, you're not good enough to play for him. Whatever it might be, you can't, can't uh, let that get to you. you got to continue to, to persevere and, and, and believe and have that passion for, for wanting to be that player. And... and a lot of that has to do with your commitment. You got to be committed to it. You got to be totally committed in uh, in the best because that's what you're going to be competing against is the best to get to that level. And um, it's a process. You got to got to be the best of the best in high school, and then you got to go to college and try and be the best of the best, and then you got to try and get to the NFL and, and try and be the best of the best there to stay there because there's people always coming in trying to take your job. So I think. Commitment. You can't rest on your laurels. Uh, 
once you do make it to the top of certain levels. Um, and the only way to do that is through hard work. And if you're willing to put the work in and do do things with other guys or maybe going to the mall or going to the movies or hanging out with their girlfriends or whatever it might be, you've got to be the guy that says, I'm going to go put in some extra work. I've got to work before practice starts. I've got to put in some extra work after practice when we have to i be working on my game. Those are the guys that make it uh, to the next level because there's a very small, small percentage of guys that play college football actually make it to professional football. And guys that do are the ones that put in that type of time. And they have to have ability. There's no question about it. you, you got to have that ability, but you also have to be able to refine that ability. And the only way you can refine it is through that hard work. A lot of younger athletes look up to the stars of today. Who did you look up to when you were playing in your younger days? I was a big fan of Roman Gabriel, who was quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams when I was growing up. I grew up in Los Angeles. The Rams were huge. Um, USC was, was the uh, football team in town, so their quarterback was Jimmy Jones. And he was a guy that I looked up to just because he was African-American. He was uh, a very, very talented and um I loved, I loved Roger Staubach as well. We played for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, another very versatile quarterback. He could do a lot of different things. He could scramble. You know, he could run. He could throw. Very good in the clutch. And he um, really lived an exemplary life off the field, too. He was a born again Christian guy. He served in the, served in the Navy. So, uh, really good all around uh, man, not just football player. So, those are some of the guys that I really looked up to when I was growing up. All right, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Moon. I really appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure, and uh, good luck on the on the interview and the project you're doing, and uh, good luck to you and whatever it is you want to do with the rest of your life, okay? Thank you for listening to the interview with Hall of Fame quarterback Warren Moon. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you leave your comments below as well. Please check out my website, prointerviews.org, for other interviews. Like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash prointerviews. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash prointerviews. Please subscribe to me on YouTube at youtube.com slash prointerviews. Thanks again for listening. Stay tuned for more. And feel free to contact me.